The process of going from a single cell as a fertilized egg to a multicellular organism starts with fertilization. After fertilization, the cells divide multiple times and form a hollow ball of cells called a blastula. Then, this blastula will form a pore and begin to gastrulate. Eventually, it will form a zygote. Development. It's a one-way street. Or is it? During gastrulation, the three germ layers form. These layers are the endoderm, mesoderm, and ectoderm. The different layers move around and interact with one another using different chemical signals. Depending on where these layers move, the cells form different structures. As cells form the endoderm layer, they move toward the middle of the embryo to make the organism's insides, such as the liver, digestive tract, and lungs. Endoderm forms guts. Ew! The mesodermal cells form the middle layer by moving between the other two layers to become the skeletal system, muscles, and vascular regions. Mesoderm forms muscles. Finally, the ectoderm cells move to the outside of the embryo and develop into the central and peripheral nervous systems, along with the epidermis. Ectoderm forms the brain. We know the final destination and corresponding structures of the germ layers because scientists have generated fate maps. Fate maps are made by staining cells and tracking where they go in a developing embryo. A developing embryo is made up of stem cells. A stem cell receives signals from other cells around it and is induced to form a more specific cell type, and eventually a, di a totally different structure. For example, the eye is controlled by a gene known as PAX6. If everything is in its place, like in part one, a lens will form. However, if the optic vesicle, which is expressing PAX6, is moved to the trunk of the embryo, no lens will be formed, as is seen in part two. This is because the trunk cells are not the right type of stem cell. If the optic vesicle is removed, as in part three, there is no PAX6 expression, and therefore no lens will be formed. Finally, part 4 displays that when a different type of stem cell is inserted, no lens will form. These four experiments show that certain stem cells induce new fates and structures in other types of stem cells. As an adult, most stem cells are lost and those that are left are less potent, like old men who refuse to change their ways. But in some cases, stem cells can maintain their potency. The Benjamin Button jellyfish, the immortal jellyfish, or the Turritopsis nutricula, is a prime example of this. As its common name suggests, this jellyfish is believed to be immortal. Scientists have discovered that this jellyfish can revert between its polyp and medusa forms as many times as it wishes, primarily doing so when it is in danger. But how can it revert its old man cells back to its baby stem cells is unknown. But imagine what it would be like if humans could harness this power for medical applications. Could we live forever? Do we want to? Special thanks to John Cena's biceps, The Simpsons, and Carl from Pixar's Up.